So when she tells me that that's ready, I'll hand back over to yourself. I'm ready to go. I was just waiting for the broadcast to start. Can I just say that if anybody's not speaking, can you make sure you keep yourself on mute because it just makes it even clearer and prevents feedback from uh, from occurring for everybody. So just remember to unmute when you want to start talking. Yeah, and now we're now we're gone live. I'll just pass over to Councillor Hunt to start the meeting. Okay. All right. Good morning, everybody. Um, I, I'm not going to do introductions because you should be able to see on your screens. Um, everybody's uh, names and, and uh, titles. Um, can I just, before we start, I could be getting a phone call from the hospital this morning. So at the moment, I've got both of my phones ringing or, or, or on standby. So if oh, yeah. I do need to go, I, I will do it as quickly as possible. Okay, right. Um, we're here to hear uh, an application by the Barons Hotel of Hornby Road. Uh, the panel have agreed that I am chairing it and that we will allow 30 minutes for each party to make their representations. And there will be a five minute summing up uh, for each of the parties at the end. That doesn't mean you have to take 30 minutes. Um, you can keep it as short as you like. With regards to the uh, objectors, We've agreed that Mr. White will go first, Mr. Uh, Councillor Mark Smith will go second, and then a Mr. Ferber will go uh, and round up at the end of that. And if, if when we come to this summing up from the objectors, if just one person could do it, it would make life a lot easier. Okay. Uh, yep. In that case, I don't think there's... Oh, um, once we've dealt with all of the um, the applications and the objectors, we will go into private session to, to make a decision and you will be notified, all parties will be notified within five working days. So it will be sometime next week. Okay. Yeah. I uh, think that's good enough. Chair, Chairman, um, you perhaps want to just check with your colleagues if they have any declarations of interest oh, before right, we yeah. get started. Right. Does anybody have any declarations of interest? No, Chair. No. You don't no. have to. Okay. Right then, uh, Mr. Sanchez, it's your uh, opportunity to explain to the to the panel as to why this application should be approved. Good morning, everybody. Okay. Um, obviously, I've looked through the objections. Um, it's mainly around what they're saying is public nuisance and the big police presence and with music. Firstly, I'd like to put to you, we did have live music um, under the Music Act 2003. That was till 11 p.m. Obviously, they've stated a lot of different references that we had problems with the neighbour. Um, obviously, we did have a meeting in the Barons Hotel about this, and they said we can continue no problem. We decided it would be best to change our goals. So what we chose to do is we wanted to open a restaurant based on a Michelin star chef, which is Wayne, who lives here on site. Um, he's, he's from South Africa. He's a UK national here now. Um, and we want to develop a restaurant. We're not interested in a, in a pub or a rowdy pub. It's basically a sit down restaurant open to the public is our main game of what we want to do. So that's that. With the regards to police president, presence, there has been a lot of police presence in the past. Um, a couple of them things were for two of Blackpool's most wanted people, one being Re Lewis Radcliffe um, and one being under the name Joe Bro, I believe. It's about both of them people, one which was actually staying in the hotel and one which was not staying in the hotel. We had obviously CCTV evidence and a lot of information for that. So within seven days, we had the days. That's just in one week. Obviously, the neighbours are not aware of all the, them situations. We are, and so are the police. Um, we've only had a couple of issues where we've had to have somebody removed from the hotel, and that was on Christmas Eve. Other than that, we've not really had much problems itself actually with the hotel. In regards to the back passageways late, relating to number 62, 
effect. And we are even worried about the situation of that because the passageway is quite dark. We can't put CCTV up there because obviously on public property uh, or council property, sorry. They are nothing to do with the hotel and they do not stay in the hotel because I've been there and I've seen them people. Um, I don't really have much more else to say. Um, apart from obviously we're covering everything we can. We've got a door entry system put in, which shuts off at 11 o'clock, so nobody from the street can get into the hotel after 11 o'clock, unless they've got a key fob, which is issued by room numbers, which is individual tags, so you can see on our... ...clock, the doors are closed, they can't get in. Obviously they can ring, but we wouldn't let them in. Um, what else do I want to put across? Obviously we've got the... CCTV system, which we're actually upgrading to a colour 24 hour. So in through the night, it works as colour as well as sound. Um, yeah, that's my main points. The police presence. Um, why? That's why. Because obviously we've helped with the police quite a lot for a lot of situations over the last few months. Um, I've been here since the 15th of September. What happened before the 15th of September? I don't know. I wasn't here. We bought into the company on the 15th of September. Um, I know because we have we've got the hotel next door, Cameron Cove. There was issues over the summer last year. Again, I wasn't here. There was a manager here working for a lady called Nia, who had the company De Dennis Bar, and we did witness a lot of things. Just from obviously we, we had breakfast in Cameron Cove before that, and we were actually quite horrified by the manager that was actually managing the hotel. That was summer 2021. We didn't come in here until September the 15th, 2021. Um, just to make the points clear. And I think that's basically all I need to say at the moment. Okay. Uh, Mr. White, do you have any questions to anything that Mr. Uh, Sanchez has said or has put in his writing, in his application? These are questions. You, you get the opportunity to put your, your side of the case. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, Mr. Sanchez, the, regarding the, the police activity, how, how did that come about? Are you part of any of the, the police um, hotel type, public neighbourhood type? No, I'm, I'm actually on, it's on the Lancashire Police. Um, I don't know if you remember, there was an appeal for, there's a group of five people. One of those was, I don't know if I'm, it was basically Lewis Radcliffe. Um, we um, recognised we recognised Mr. The pitch. Sanchez, I'm, I know you've already mentioned the people, but could you avoid using their names because it could prejudice their... Yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah, sure. Okay. So, yes, this is we, open to the public. Sorry. Right. Okay. So it was on a public Facebook page of um, people that are wanted. Um, so we basically, with our system in our computer, which is called QBook, we basically, on a daily basis, take all the names on the Blackpool wanted um, on the Lancashire Police, and we put their names in our system, and that searched through our four hotels. And obviously, on that occasion, that, that guest appeared to be in the Baron's Hotel. Thank you. Um, as a, a, a hotelier group uh, director, I became um, aware of issues at the, the Baron's Hotel from September, uh, uh, potentially prior to uh, your arrival, um, I took the, the a couple of your neighbours along to the uh, the Talbot Ward Pact meeting um, uh, to, so that they could get reassurance that some of the issues um, were being properly investigated, uh, and I. I, I, I really am um, frustrated because I have seen the CCTV footage and I see people coming away from your, um, from your front door and going round into the alley to, to do whatever they, whatever they do. And, and I've also worked with a lot of the uh, the objectors, and when they try and uh, come around to discuss issues with yourself or or your your partner, that they they 
they get treated extremely badly, um, uh, if not aggressively. And <laughs> there is... Do you want to allow Mr. Mr. White, do you want to allow Mr. Sanchez the opportunity to, to address what you've said to him now? Be- all right. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. Okay. Well, first of all, with regards to CCTV evidence, I've asked for the CCTV evidence. Um, I believe it's from the neighbour next door. Um, something about white powder being handed out of the back door of the fire exit of Barron's Hotel. I'm never aware of any situation like that. We've since then put an, uh, an alarm system on the back fire door, so any member of guests that goes out that fire door, the alarm will sound. Um, with regards to going out the front door and round to the gates through the back, that's for car parking. So I've not seen no CCTV evidence of anything that states these facts, and even though I've asked for it. Right. Who's who, who CCTV is recording onto the council's property? Tell you. Because when I, asked, when I asked the council if I could put up CCTV, they said no, because it's, pub, it's public property. You're only allowed to film on your own land. So I don't understand why we're not allowed to put that CCTV up, because we want that, to. I think that's an issue that needs to be addressed um, yeah. out, outside of this meeting. Um, yeah. Carry on. Um, yeah, so obviously that's about that situation. Obviously we can't verify anything about that CCTV. Um, with the police presence, yes, we call the police quite a lot. We had a, a break in, I can't remember the month, it was in the middle of the night. Um, we actually kept the, the suspect in the area. The police come and took the guy away. That was in the middle of the hours. There's been several fights outside, not to do with us. It's been with another local hotel. A lot of people coming backwards and forwards down the street. It's a holiday area. Um, we do call the police quite a lot. As soon as there's any problem, whether we catch anybody with drugs, if they see anything around the back, we will call the police. And that's what we've been told to do. And that's what we're trying to do, is crack down the crime and the disorder. We're all for it. I think Mr. 100%. Sanchez as well, Mr. White, was also saying that they've tried to discuss um, the issues yes, yes, with yourself yes. and, um, yes, and, Smith yes. and your partner Sorry. and being yes. met with regression Sorry. you might want to cover. What, what actually happened is a lady walked in. I don't know if I can mention the name or not. Um, she came in and she basically started on my partner. My partner was serving breakfast. It was between 9 and 11 breakfast here. And the restaurant was full of people. And she started going on about an incident that happened the night before, which was to do with this break-in, I believe what it was. And the, we called the police. And the police obviously took the guy away. But it was breakfast time. It wasn't the right time to do it. We said, look, we're busy, blah, blah, blah. The lady still carried on. And this has come up quite a few times. She said that she's going to call the council on Monday morning and report us for having fridges in the rooms because she's looked on booking.com. I don't know why, what the situation was, but we were busy at the time. Um, it wasn't the right place and the right time to come and discuss things at all. If any if any ne- neighbour next door has been in here, I've spoken to him politely. He's absolutely lovely, understanding. We had a little issue with the light. The council came out, we, which rectified, rectified that. We've not got a problem if somebody wants to come and speak to us in a normal time or give us a call. Not a problem at all. We will work with everybody. Right. The in your in the start of the public pack, you suggest that uh, that you've made um, or, or taken into account the needs of the area. Yet, just a couple of doors away from you, there are two empty um, food food serving premises lying empty. Uh, why do you feel that you? Um, in a by converting your property can provide anything different from uh, from those two. Well, first, first of all, the main meal of the day is breakfast, as we know. If you walk two streets from here, there's two cafes on Coronation Street, and I've been in there several times and not been able to even get a table for breakfast. Um, that's the main. That's the first thing we want to concentrate on is breakfast. Um, that's why I want to open up the front. I don't know if you've seen the plans and the planning board tell of the council to put the five folding doors in to open up to the terrace so we can serve breakfast. Okay. Um, Wayne's obviously a Michelin star chef from South Africa originally. So we feel that's something different rather than an Indian or a Chinese or restaurant, whatever it may be, two doors away, which is currently closed. And I believe they were not serving alcohol with their food, which is also another failure, I believe, which is when I was speaking, because I was actually speaking to the owner last year when he came over from Manchester. And he was saying, would you like to, would you be interested in basically renting restaurants? But you were not able to sell alcohol in the restaurants. That's what he told us. Not but whether it's the council or whether it's his religion, I'm not too sure. I, I'm sure if the, uh, if the application was done correctly, um, 
with a with a proper business plan. I, I'm sure that council would consider uh, such a, an application favourably due to the the location being that bit further away from the um, an area which is primarily uh, sleeping. Um, so. Yeah, no, just another point. I've got um, some friends just up on the same road further up. Um, she doesn't do breakfast herself. There's quite a few hotels that don't do breakfast anymore since COVID and since things are reopened. So I just see it a good opportunity to obviously bring something to life for breakfast. Obviously, there's a cafe just on the corner of Coronation Street that's been closed for several years, I believe. And obviously, we've got the premises here, and that's one thing we'd like to do. Right. On page 12 of the, uh, the public pack, that you state that you have a, a kitchen registered with the council for serving food to the the public um, and your guests. Yet you set, check on the uh, on the online food hygiene uh, uh, portal, yep. and and neither the Barons or Tamarin Cove appear on there That's... yet yet entries that are on that page with the same postcode go back as far as 2017 yet by your front door you've got a food hygiene uh, sticker stating five for your food hygiene I, I do appreciate that uh, that you've got work going on and it would be uh, an inappropriate for the council to give you a an official rating. Yeah. So why, why are you displaying five, which is certainly we, cannot we, be your five? We have obviously not put that on there. Them doors are under planning. That, that window on the moment is under planning to actually come out um, completely. So obviously that will be removed with the whole window frame, obviously on the planning of the bifolding doors completely. Uh, they're not very good wind. I've tried. It's not a you get, you've taken uh, yeah, you've made no attempt to remove um, advertising, which is completely false. Well, obviously it was, I believe that rating was from, because basically Dennis Bar is the limited company we've been bought into, yeah? So I've re-registered the kitchen with obviously my name and Wayne's name, okay? But Dennis Bar is still existing. So I, I presume that is from the previous company, which is, which is, I bought into that company, which is Dennis Bar limited yeah, but although obviously it's the change of person on the company the company still exists Dennis Barr right but that is it, it's a bit like the uh, on, on your property the Tamarind Cove um, next door mm -hmm. where you're displaying four star visit England accreditation yeah no, I'm aware of that I've got the um, proofs here and basically they're not removing the actual sign base, they're actually taking out the vinyls and putting new vinyls in completely. That's all under control. Uh, it, I, yeah. I, I thank you for co confirming uh, that. Um, no, 100%. We're aware of that. Um, yeah. Um, with regards to your, your food deliveries and your suggesting that you've been using electric bikes, right. that, that's not not been the case to date completely has it right before when i was at tamarind cove i was using my car okay that was at tamarind cove then when we've moved to barons we've obviously refurbished the kitchen put a brand new kitchen in completely took it right back to the bone and obviously we started with an electric bike and that's all we've done since we've been at barons with an electric bike right that's that's not the information that i'm I'm receiving for because the neighbors, it, but there have been incidents where because it suggests that they're the boy is outside revving the engine. Well, the electric bike, you cannot rev an engine on an electric bike. It's absolutely impossible. That, that's why I ask whether you confirm. Yeah, no, that's in incorrect fabricated information. Right. Uh, moving forward to the, um, the, uh, the decking area. Yeah. Now, your decking area is going to take away the, the, uh, the parking spaces from the... Uh, the front of the property. Now, where are your guests going to unload? Um, so the two bays at Tamarind Cove will be for five-minute stops, for 10-minute stops, for unloading, 
disembark in, and then obviously we'll uh, offer alternative parking at the back or in local car parks, including the hotel just further up the road, which has public car parks. Right. So we'll keep two spaces. One of them will probably keep as a disabled space. And then obviously you've got one for unloading, disembarking, obviously at the Tamarind Cove. Right. I, the, the feedback from neighbours is that there, there are continually um, vehicles cars being used for the food deliveries but I'm just concerned that um, guests disembarking and and food deliveries um... so the, the food deliveries would still continue with the electric bike one bike that's all we use obviously if we if it was to work there would be two bikes um, and obviously between the two buildings come out on the back of barons it would be stored at the back of the building not on the front of the building right. um, I've received feedback from all of the neighbours, uh, all the the objectors that I, I'm speaking for, and uh, they they believe your uh, your response is uh, is clutching at straws, and you are um, and and they dispute all the um, the evidence that or the or the counter responses you have made um they do uh, appreciate the your involvement in taking some of the black balls um most wanted off the streets um but they the concerns are significant um I, i've seen the see i've seen images from inside next door where they where the lights that you shine onto the front of your building shine into their room. Um, is there any updates on when they... Uh, Can I comment on that, please? Yeah. So we wasn't aware of the situation that one, one light on the very end was shining into her lounge. Obviously, when I saw the objections, we instantly turned the lights off until we got it rectified. Last, I think it was Sunday or Saturday, um, the council came out with one police officer asked us to turn the lights on. They explained that we've got them off because of the reasons. They also turned up the lights are off. They went into the property, property next door. They came back and they said, yes, there's just one adjustment to make on one, one light. Other than that, we're happy with all the signs, the illumination of everything we're happy with. Um, just, the one, just the one light, which was rectified the next day and which is totally moved away from their property. It doesn't shine through the window. If they'd have come and spoken us to us, we would have fixed it straight away. But obviously, it's been done anyway. Uh I do appreciate what you're saying, but it's not the uh, <coughs> the the neighbours are reluctant to speak to you because of the, the way that they the, have been no, treated in the past. The, 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 no, the, the guy the guy who lives next door has always come in here and always spoken sensibly to me, and he's been absolutely fine. It's the case that his wife, unfortunately, when Wayne went out in the car, started banging on, came round running round to our car park, hammering on the window about the live music we had, so we're not permitted to do live music. And she was banging on his car window. He actually had to drive off. Um, when I spoken to the husband, he said, sorry, she is like that, and he actually apologised about that situation and said, ignore her. I don't want to cause problems and everything. But anyway, we've always dealt with him, and he's always been perfectly and always communicated properly. When we had new guttering and, um, what do you call it, the um, new guttering put on the top, she kicked off and they, they were having a go at the people that installed. There was nothing wrong. There was nothing changed with theirs. It seemed to be an issue over nothing again. Um, if you look in Google, the old photos to the new photos, her guffering never changed. She was claiming that it wanted and she wanted compensation. I don't know where all this comes from. Mr. White, have you got any more direct, specific questions that you want to ask? Because I'm, I'm mindful that time's running on and I would like to bring in uh, uh, Councillor Smith and uh, Mr. Ferber. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I'm happy to uh, let others have a work, have a say. Right. Thank okay you. then. Thank you, Mr. White. Um, in that case, I bring in uh, Councillor Mark Smith, who is the uh, local ward councillor. Councillor Smith. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. I got a question. Uh, you said, you, is the restaurant trade in a separate company to the hotel? That I get confused there on, the, on there. No, no. De De Dennis Bar is our limited company, and obviously that trades as Barron's Hotel. 
So the whole the whole hotel does come under Dennis Spa. Dennis Spa, so it's not a separate company. Inside. No, it's okay. not. Right, I just got a bit confused on that on the what you're saying there. Uh, no problem. Uh, my concern is a question I got is because in your original sort of application you have here, the reason you yep. want to uh, extend to have a full open license for alcohol is for residents to go from premises 56 Hornby Road to 58 to 60 Hornby Road. With that, uh, the intention of that is that will increase, that will give you the ability to allow anybody off the street to enter your premises to drink alcohol. So it's not just, it's, by giving you a license to do one thing, we we'll give you a license to do everything on that ground. Okay. I mean, that's the hotels adjacent. My thing is, why well, you just move, make it to one hotel, then you don't have that issue having people were Your concern is your bookings.com rating, because they've got people can't go from their one hotel which you own to the one next door, you know, which is not the issue of the council, it's the issue of you having two properties that's adjacent to each other, you know. Yeah. And yeah, I have had a look at the uh, the plans that you what you propose for the new bifold doors application twenty stroke oh two four three, and uh, yes, you uh, currently you have four four available parking spaces on the front that would be replaced by the image I got here of having five tables, uh, which would, would encourage with the doors open will encourage additional noise and disturbance in the street, you know. So, but you also you're saying that uh, there's not enough. Councillor Smith, I think you yeah. again you you sort of you're sort of making quite a long statement, and and, yeah. and it's probably a question or two in there. But um, I think if I get to the stage where I can't remember what the first point you made <laughs> was, and then 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 for the person trying to answer okay, you is is probably going to struggle as well. Um, Thank, so perhaps thanks, you, just... you, you beat me to it because I was just going to come <laughs> back and say, is there a question in this, please? Right, let me try and answer what I can to what I can remember. You'll get an okay. I'll, go, I'll go back in a minute, Chair, to the so first With one regards to the two premises next door to each other and allowing, uh, the question is, is can you going to be allowed to have an open license for any use, which is going to cause, I would say, additional noise and disturbance in the street to people? Because also with that open license, adds to the extra add about your uh, plan application to have bifold doors open to the premises. I feel it's going to be. The ability of having an open license to serve just question, to please, one problem. Mark. Yeah. Can, right. Smith, can we have okay. a question, please? I think the question is the question is having a license to open license to fix one problem next door to the hotel next door is going to cause additional you're you're going to cause additional That's... disturbance in the street with noise and disturbance with anybody using your premises. Okay. Right. So what we're asking for is we're asking for a public license for public. So obviously we can open the restaurant for the public, whether they're from next door, across the road or from around the corner. That's from obviously 9 a.m. to 2300 hours with the terrace closed from 10 p.m., which is what the police have put on their their um, report to close the terrace at 10 o'clock. So that was that. Then what we're asking is for the people in 56 Cameron Cove to have residential rights. So obviously that's the same rights as what Barron's Hotel have as residents. Obviously, it is the same. It is a different building. Um, we have obviously spoken to the landlady that owns the building next door, and she won't give us any sort of permission to obviously knock through or do anything like that at all. Baron's owner will. So that's the conflict we have, obviously, because obviously if we put a door through and the council could approve it and we could do something like that, it would be a, a problem solved with our people next door. The other problem is obviously... If it was just next door, not public, they'd still be walking into the street and then walking into Barron's. So that's why. For the day in Blackpool, they want to stop in for breakfast, lunch, and evening meal. They can do. And that's that. My question is, okay, you're asking, asking for a licence from, uh, is it from 8 in the morning, 9 in the morning, sorry, 9 in the morning, no. to 11 o'clock at night. Is there need for a public license from that early hours of the morning to serve breakfast with alcohol? I will be totally honest with you. I'll put them hours on there. I'm ha ha obviously happy to speak to all the committee. And if they're saying, hey, that's ridiculous, three, because I know the hotel just up the road, they applied for seven o'clock. There was objections. That's ridiculous. I totally agree with you. If it was 12 o'clock lunchtime, I think it'd be a more sensible time. If the committee turned around and said, it's three o'clock, it's you know, that's what we're here to discuss. It's fine. Obviously, we don't need, I don't want to be selling alcohol at nine o'clock in the morning, to be honest. No, not with breakfast. So, no. 
I think okay. it's realistic, to be honest. Yeah, uh, yes, uh, the other issue is, is regarding this is, is also because having a, 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 I presume you're a family hotel, the Baron's Hotel, and you have yes. families and children in the hotel. Okay, yeah. the concern myself is you've got having an alcohol all day to public and non residents entering the property, the additional effect to have effect on young children in the premises because you can't keep them in their rooms, which is unfair. They're on holiday as well. So they need to have the same enjoyment of Blackpool as well as old people who might want to enjoy taking an alcoholic beverage. Yeah. What we want to do is promote, and like obviously with the signs and everything as we go go through the process, if we get that far, is obviously it's not going to look like a weather spoons or anything. It's going I think broadband might be needed. <laughs> See it and think, oh, dinner, lunch. That's the aspect that we want to push across to people. It's a new restaurant that's doing breakfast, it's doing lunch and evening meals with a bit of difference. Because of obviously Wayne's history, we had a restaurant in Spain called La Cathina. You're more than welcome to all Google it, La Cathina Sitges, and you'll see the, the style of the restaurant we had. Yeah, I mean, any license is on the premises, isn't it? Not on the person, the chef yeah. doing the cooking. You know, so that could yeah. change any point in time. So we can't guarantee. You can't guarantee. Every we can say yes, we plan to do this, but it's never set in stone because the chef might decide to go somewhere else. I don't know. Do I? Right. But, but if if the council were objective against what we've done and they said okay it's alcohol only be served with a substantial meal it's a way around another way around it for us because we're not wanting to push for the bar side right okay okay also, also can i chair can i ask a question regarding the other part of the application regarding the 24-hour uh, delivery of food from the premises yeah. carry on but make it a question not a statement please sorry chair sorry you know <laughs> The question is, uh, okay, I might start with a small statement to start with before I get to the question, you know. Uh, I've had lots of issues, concerns with uh, increased activity from uh, these online apps which are doing food deliveries like Just the Deliveroo, et cetera, and other parts of the ward of getting complaints where a vast number of vehicles pulling up outside the premises, coming and going vehicles, early, early evenings and late into the night. Uh, in an area where it's designated mainly hotel use, it's not. I don't freak out. I just go to you. I feel why do you want to do twenty four hours when I feel there's ever? You know you wanted to high, do a high quality food offer, but yeah. it's the noise and disturbance within I, that. Again, I totally agree with you. There's no way I'm going to be working twenty four hours, and neither is my partner. We've put that extension on. See, obviously, what hours the council can obviously negotiate with us if, if possible. Obviously, eleven o'clock. Most people come out of pubs on a Friday night. They go home, they want to order a takeaway. 11 o'clock, I feel, is too early to cut off takeaways because obviously our takeaways, when we were doing it before, always got busy 10 o'clock onwards. And then 11 o'clock, we have to close off. So I always felt there was another niche, maybe for an hour or an extra two hours, even like one o'clock in the morning, I think would be absolutely sustainable. It's not the case that we really want to go 24 hours. And I think there's a lot of objections. People are saying that, oh, we don't want people coming and collect some food. And it's not a takeaway where we're going to open the doors and people come in and get a takeaway. It's only online, and it would only be delivered by an electric bike. Okay, yeah, I just think, because it is a residential, not res a holiday destination area where people are sleeping, and there could be families and children sleeping at 11 o'clock at night, they've been out all day, done the pleasure beach, doing their activities, a bit tired, yeah. want to go home, and they, and they don't want to really have disturbance yeah. late at I'll night, early hours of the morning. Again, I'll be honest with you, the takeaway side is just that little optional thing we wanted in there. We're not doing takeaway since January this year. We've stopped all that until obviously we can see if we can get this sorted. Again, that's not a major point of the amendment of the licence. The major amendment is for the public to be able to come in here and eat a meal, whether it's breakfast, lunch and dinner. And obviously, if it was alcohol with lunch and dinner, that's what we're looking for. Uh, Chair, no more questions. Thank you. Right. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Ferber, have you got any questions to anything that Mr. Sanchez has said? Hello, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. carry on. Uh, we Mr. can hear Sanchez. you, but we can't see you. Right, Mr. Sanchez? Hi there. Do you, do you intend to sell food and drink after the 2300 under the public off license sales? Right, so to the public. We, will, we don't intend to sell alcohol to the public at all after 11 o'clock. So 11 o'clock, that would end, and the tariffs would end at 10 o'clock. So the food would be by delivery only. 
okay? So there wouldn't be people coming in to eat dinner because the restaurant will close. The terrace would close at 10 o'clock for diners, okay? They'd have to be left the premises or left the terrace, sorry, at 10 o'clock, okay? Obviously, they could then come in and they could finish off their drinks or their food till 11 o'clock, yeah? Or they could still yeah. order drinks till 11 o'clock, obviously, drinking okay. outside. So that's okay. that. Obviously, the residence license is the residence license. So what we're asking <clears> on the amendment is to 2,300 hours to be able to serve alcohol with the food for the public. After 11 o'clock, no, not at all. Well, well, you're asking for 2,300 or 2,400 till four or five in the morning. That's for hot food delivery, not for, not for public coming into the hotel. That's for delivery only. Right, well, we need some definite confirmation that's what it is because, because you're saying the, the public notice I've seen, it's if you look in public, the council's... Sales, public sales of alcohol on and off licence premises from 9am till 2300. But the first line says late night uh, refreshments from 2300 till 5 in the morning. Now that's yes, that's exactly what I was... Yeah. Hang on, hang on. Right. But what I'm saying is, as your market grows, you'll want to go all night, if, if that's the case, and you, you won't have enough uh, vehicles to drive your food and whatever with just two electric bikes. So I'll then... Right, so... Go on, carry on. Right. So, no, the late night refreshment licence is strictly for the food to be taken away. Oh, sorry, delivered to the people's doors, whether it's delivered to another business or whether it's delivered to, obviously, somebody's residential home. So we won't see anybody sitting outside on your benches outside after no, 2,300, after, eating no, your in, food and drinking no, your bottles of that's beer? that's also incorrect. You won't see anybody after 10 o'clock p.m. sitting outside on the benches. 10 so o'clock outside. Are you going to fence it off then, or because people will sit on it? We, we close, we clock, but we obviously have to give them notice that they move back indoors until 1100 hours if they're from the public. Okay. So right. obviously, the if you look at the plans, it's got glass balustrades to stop anybody from going into the street or anything like that. Um, mm -hmm. And then the bifold indoors would be closed at 10 p.m. I understand then, that, yeah. Front door is also just a new electronic door fitted in, so only residents can get in that door with a key fob. Right, okay. So no member of the public can access any areas unless they ring the doorbell, which could be somebody yeah. checking in or something like that. So no, certainly we do not want we do not want to the restaurants will probably work till about 10 o'clock at night. We do not want public nuisance, we do not want to push it as a bar or anything like that. Obviously, the main thing with our game is is the restaurant side. That's our biggest, biggest thing we want to do, which is what I've been involved in Spain for many years is restaurants. And Wayne, Wayne also, when he came to the UK, was the head executive chef of the Northwest of the Merit Group. So he wants to put that into Blackpool, what, you know, his food and his Michelin stars from um, South Africa. I'm just worried that you'll, you'll grow and grow and grow and want to take it right through till five o'clock in the morning. No, 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 no. No, the terrace has to close 2,200 hours. When I think we've got, I don't know if you've got a copy of the police um, report there. Obviously, it was 2,300 no, hours, but we put in the original. Okay, so we put 2,300 hours to close the terrace originally. They yeah. come back and said it would be acceptable till 10 o'clock. That was their, their report. Obviously, we're happy with that. And the public sales, we would only want till 11 o'clock because we don't want people coming in here to eat a burger at 11 o'clock or half past 11. Most people, obviously, I've been in England Spain a long time. People do go out at 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock and eat dinner. Obviously, the UK market's not like that. So the terrace would definitely be closed at 10 o'clock in the evenings, and the public would obviously not be served alcohol inside the building after 11 o'clock. Okay. All right. Um, as to serving foods, you haven't served any food from January. I was walking past on the 24th of March this, this year, yep. uh, having been out to the theatre, and there was a a guy in your hallway with a hot bag, I presume picking up food to take it somewhere. 100% not, because we stopped the takeaways in January. So if you had, if you saw somebody in our hallway with a delivery bag or a just eat bag, obviously we do have 20 rooms in this hotel, and there is, excuse me, I'm off. Obviously we do get a lot of deliveries, a lot of deliveries from other, other just eats and whatever that come here. They come to the reception, it's quite frustrating really. They come in, we've got a delivery. What's the name? Can you not call them? 
and they'll give a name of obviously somebody that's staying in the room with them. Um, but no, if, if other, I can't stop other delivery drivers coming here from other companies that are delivering. Right, but that's that's what we're we're worried that that's going to happen. From your point of view, selling out, you're going to have drivers coming in to pick up your food. No, no, no. We will not. We will not have outside drivers. We have our own driver with an electric bike, which is our yeah, bike, belongs to that. us. But once you, get, once you get into a flow and get more and more uh, customers, you're going to end up having to do something other than a bike. Well, not on the not on the size of our kitchen. We're not our biggest. We're not our big establishment like a normal size takeaway. We're a hotel with a small kitchen, and obviously our main game of it is the restaurant, the takeaway. There's no way Wayne can cook for a whole restaurant and do loads of takeaways. I'm not even saying the takeaway is even going to take off that well because the main game of it is is the restaurant. There's no way he's going to be doing takeaways if he's busy with the restaurant. So when the restaurant closes at ten o'clock, eleven o'clock, the takeaways can continue for the extra hours. If you if you see what I say. Okay, I accept that. I accept that. It's just just to give a little bit more extra, obviously, gas and everything else has gone up. We want to make the restaurant strong for the street, for everybody, a, a nice-looking restaurant with good food, and then obviously be able to do the deliveries as well within them times. You know, if the restaurant's quiet, the delivery option's available. If the restaurant's uh, busy, you turn the Just Eat machine off. It's just to keep things, and obviously we can, the more staff we can employ, the better. Yeah, I mean, we, we've been here 22 years and we've fought to keep the, the gangs of ga girls and lads from stag parties making a mess up here. Yeah. Um, and, and we don't want that to happen again. Because we I totally we've understand that. Uh, we're trying we to make it a holiday area that we yeah. want to keep as a holiday area. I, to I, totally, I totally agree with you with that. You know, when we walked into this hotel in September and there was stacking hens in this, in this hotel, and I said to Wayne, I said, this is not the way we go. We took Tamron Cove, which is a seven-bedroom hotel. We've refurbished that nicely inside. We've had nice clients there. Obviously, you can't choose your bookings when they book through booking.com. No. Um, it's just one of those things that happen. And we do get the bad people sometimes, and we will ask them to leave. And that is always my policy. Yeah, I'm zero drug tolerant, and I mean zero drug tolerant and that's why if there was an issue i wish somebody would come and speak to me about anything and, you know what to do with drugs or anything to do with that antisocial behavior i'm zero i've even started okay. making up my own reports of, th of things that are going on at the back wayne wayne also um has made police statements in the past he's actually going to court for a trial of two people in the back in the backyard which was a uh, nothing again nothing to do with the hotel just a witness right uh, okay i accept that no problem uh, thank you I look forward you, to William. working with you then. Perfect. It would be wonderful to work with you. Right. right. Um, we've dealt with the public objectors. Um, I'm now going to ask the other councillors present um, if they've got any questions. And I would ask that they be questioned rather than statements. Councillor Farrell, do you have any questions? <laughs> you're on mute, Joe. Joe, you're on mute. <laughs> right, carry on. Hello, can you hear me now? Yeah. I've yes. got this, I've got an issue with my uh, laptop. Sorry about that. Um, yeah, first of all, um, why is uh, number fifty six of the Taraman Code? Why is that not licensed, and why have you not applied for a license for that rather than having the guests go next door? <laughs> okay, totally understand your point. Obviously, we've got the restaurant in consideration is what we want to do. So obviously, there's, there's two things on that amendment. One, obviously, the restaurant open to the public for people to come and drink alcohol till 1100 hours. And then obviously, number 56 to come round to here, which is obviously our guest next door is only seven bedrooms. It doesn't warrant to open a bar in there with the financial outlay of even the licensing, obviously stocking it and the staff for a, for a hotel with seven bedrooms. Thank you. Um, just to go back to the agenda, on page 12, um, you state that um, the um, that the, 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 there'll be food delivery, but on page 17, you're also stating that there'll be alcohol delivery. Can you clarify that you will not be delivering alcohol? It's a, Well, it's an option. I don't know if we're allowed to or whether we're not allowed to. If we're not allowed to, then certainly not. Um, it's something I'd like to look at, whether it would be allowed to obviously, if they ordered food, deliver, I don't know, a pack of four beers. Is that possible? Is it not possible? If we could then fine, if there's an objection, we're not allowed, then obviously we wouldn't do that. 
Okay. I just, I, I have to say, it just feels very confusing, your application of what no. you want and what you don't want. You've yeah. put an application in, and actually now through this meeting, you're saying, well, actually, we'll, we'll change that time if you want. We'll, we're not really bothered about that. You know, we're looking at no, no. that. Well, obviously, obviously, it's the picture of the hotel. We want to do as many things as possible. Obviously, we've got the restaurant side that we want to establish to the public with the bar side. That's what we want to do. And obviously, we want to do the late night um, food. So when the restaurant closes, we can continue with the food after them hours. OK, if we're allowed to deliver alcohol, then obviously we are. If the count, you know, we're, I've not been in the UK for 12 years. So a lot of things changed since the license act for, before 2003. Um, so obviously, if the council say you're not allowed to um, deliver alcohol, you're only allowed to deliver food between 11 and 1 then that's, that's perfectly acceptable. Um, we're open to every option of what, what we are allowed to do. Okay, okay, thank you for that. You know, um, we don't want to cause problems with people. We would rather say, right, okay, if they disagree with that, then fine, okay. That, them hours, we're, we're totally flexible on what we can arrange with the council to do this. Right, okay. Um, the only other point I want to make, Chair, is mm. I'm quite disappointed that the police aren't here because I would have liked to have hear, heard from the police about how many call-outs there's been, who's been calling the police, et cetera, et cetera, because I think you know, looking at the objections, and there's quite a few objections, there's a lot of uh, concerns about antisocial behaviour, drug dealing, et cetera, and there does seem to have been a lot of call-out call-outs to the police, and I would have preferred to have had the police here to, to listen to their concerns. Of course. Well, I think, I th the only thing yeah. I can say about that as Councillor uh, Farrell is that the police haven't made a representation. They it, it felt appropriate to make a representation. They've agreed a number of conditions with the applicant and so they wouldn't be invited to attend a meeting uh, where they haven't made a representation. So the licensing team at the police obviously haven't felt the need to that there is a risk to crime and disorder, et cetera, from, from the granting of this application, okay. as amended by the conditions. Okay, thank you, Sharon. That's all. Thanks, Chair. Could, thank could I just ask um, the licensing solicitor, this application doesn't cover off-sales. Therefore, if they wanted to deliver alcohol food, they would need an off-sales off licence, wouldn't they? Bear in mind, I'm just checking what actual license they actually have again. Just bear with me a moment. Because if the, li if the license allows the sale of alcohol on and off the premises, on the premises, yeah. So the current license they have only allows the sale of alcohol for consumption on the premises. Just check oh. the, just check the details of the application, of the variation. Well, but the application, you see, the application for variation. If you look at page twenty, as large page eighteen of your application, which is tab J, this deals with the supply of alcohol. So the variation allows would allow the sale of alcohol for consumption both on and off the premises. So technically, if you granted that. The application, as it as it is at the moment, then they would be allowed to um, serve alcohol on and for consumption on and off the premises um, between nine a.m. and eleven p.m. Or, or such other hours as you amend. So technically, they could serve alcohol by way of takeaway. Um, right. During those hours, what you could obviously do if you were minded to grant some of the application rather than others, you could specifically exclude takeaway deliveries or you could exclude the sale of, you could restrict it to, just to consumption of alcohol on the premises, which would allow the sales to take place in the, inside the property and obviously on the terrace, but it wouldn't allow off sales of any form. Okay. Okay, right. Thanks for that clarification. Um, Councillor Baker, do you have any questions to Mr Sanchez? Uh, yeah, thank you, Chair. Um, more to um, uh, Mrs Davis, uh, Sharon Davis, if I could please. Um, there's been, M Mr Sanchez has agreed that certain parts of his application could be changed. Um, have we been taking a note of all this and, and can we agree this? Uh, via conditions or whatever, um, 
I mean, to, to actually grant it as it is now um, is a bit problematical, but Mr. Sanchez has agreed to certain changes uh, if necessary. How can we establish those and get those agreed? Uh, yeah. Well, as it's a matter of, as an elite, I hopefully I've hopefully got a note of everything he said about sort of what he really wants and what he is happy to sort of be flexible on. As in any application for a variation, you can grant it as it's applied for, you can refuse it completely, or you can um, you can decide which bits of it you want to grant and which bits of it you don't. So you can you can whether or not the applicant agrees with it or not, um, you could you could you you would deal with it as ever your your role is to look at the promoting the licensing objectives and if you feel it would promote the licensing objectives by way of granting some parts of it but not others or restricting the hours for the sale of alcohol um then then you would do make that decision as you as you feel appropriate thank you um mr sanchez yes. you would be happy to go al along with those uh, conditions then would you if they were um Change. Of course, as long as yeah. it follows the four objectives and everybody's happy, the council, the police, the, you know, the neighbours are never going to be 100% happy. We want to be, we, we want to work with everybody. We want to make everybody happy. We want Can to I make the building look nice. Go on, sorry. Okay. All right, thank you, Sanchez. I just want to clarify something. We, we've, you've, you've agreed that you would be happy to amend certain things. Once yes. we've dealt with the objectors, we'll come back to that we'll go through the things that we want to amend and then we'll okay. get your agreement if you're, you're happy to agree. And then we'll, we'll look at it from that point of view. Okay. So we'll come awesome. back at the end and look at no all problem. of the possible amendments that we could make. Sure. Is that, no are you happy with that? Very happy with that. I, I'm just, just mindful that we're going here and there and I'd rather yeah, yeah. Just stick to what we've got so far sure. and then we'll come back to it. Okay. No problem. Right. In, if you've got any more questions, Mr. Baker, uh, Councillor Baker, I've just got one, Mr. Sanchez. You're, sure. you're talking about opening this restaurant up to the public. Sure. Now, I know having been up Hornby Road <clears throat> and tried to park there for, for various things, sure. I'm mindful of the parking situation. How sure. will you deal with the additional parking issues if you've got a public restaurant, you've got already your guests in, which will take up your car parking spaces. How will no. you deal with the additional parking? Well, the, the majority of people are the people walking down the street, the, walk, the, the walkers by, basically. So obviously people staying in other hotels. As I stated earlier, a lot of the hotels last year weren't even serving breakfast. I don't know if that was because of COVID situations or they just didn't feel they wanted to serve breakfast. So a lot of people have walked past and obviously, they're like, we can catch these people walking past. Same as the cafes around the corner. You know, they're doing Sunday roast. There's, they haven't got, they've got zero parking. The place is full. They're obviously people by foot, and they're the people we want to catch. Okay. Right. Um, in that case, then, if there's no further questions to Mr. Sanchez... We well, especially then if they're having a drink, they won't be driving. <laughs> yeah, but they usually got a designated driver. Uh, right. Oh. <laughs> Uh, right. Um, we, if that deals with the the applicant, uh, we then come on to uh, Mr. White, who can put his case for the objection. But I would remind you, Mr. Uh, White, that we have got limited time. So if you could keep it, um, we've all read the your the objections from different people in yourself. So it's just to highlight any points that you want to. OK, carry on. Thank you, Councillor. Uh, one, one question that hasn't uh, been raised. Um, on the, the plans on the, uh, the application, the, the building just shows one public toilet. Uh, is that really appropriate for your, your business model? So on the ground floor, we have one public toilet, correct? Again, if the council and the environmental health suggest that no, we need two, then we will obviously put in the plan to make, make additions for that. But can, can I can I clarify, Mr. White? These on this isn't questions yeah, to Mr. Sorry. Sanchez. It's your statement. 
Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. That's why the application should be refused. Thank you, Councillor. Um, having heard uh, all the all the statements and, and Mr Sanchez's willingness to work with the council the uh, and vary the, the original application, we would be more than happy. Um, uh, and we, we put our faith in the, the council team, having listened to all the, the comments the comments and concerns from the community um and we we certainly appreciate it and and put our faith in the uh licensing panel thank you very much councillor okay thank you councillor smith it's your opportunity to, to make your statement now thank you chair i don't think i'm going to read off my long statement i think i've covered most of that earlier in in the questions but i just want to recap on certain points regarding that yeah i mean i know you spoke about trying to work with the, like the council licensing committee regarding the uh the food and drink not just have a, a, a vertical drinking establishment more of a sit down food beverage with your food offering which I think is more appropriate. I applaud your aspirations to have a high quality restaurant in the town centre. Anybody who's going to bring quality to town is applauded by myself, you know, and I, I do like that. I just feel like, I feel like it needs to be focused and targeted to what you, your objective, what you want to get out of it, not try to extend it to everybody and have a, a large drinking vertical establishment, draw more people in and antisocial behaviour within the community. Uh, that's the point regarding that. Uh, regarding the uh, the uh, delivery from food service, if you like just eat or delivery. Yes, uh, I do. I have still concerns at one o'clock in the morning because people are sleeping. Uh, it depends how it's managed, but uh, beyond that point, I think it's probably a no go. You know, but I do have concerns between extension to eleven o'clock for. It's not the vehicle noise, it's more the activity of people moving and coming and going, you know, there's lots of activity and noise, you know. So, I mean, I get complaints, I've had issues also with yourself, with the premises, with, the, with your signage, you know, littering and upsetting people. So it's working with the council and trying to resolve these issues. I mean, we all need to work together. We are, every hotel is there to have a business, you know, we're not, we're not fighting with each other. If we, if we all work together, we'll achieve more than fighting with against each other. So we need to resolve these problems, these issues, and we will support your business, but we need to support it in a, a way that supports the community and the business around you as well. Thank, thank you, Chair. Okay, Mr. Ferber, do you have anything you want to say? I, th I think he's cleared up most of the points. I, I have no objection to the restaurant side and the late night food. I, I do have a problem with alcohol being served after the midnight um, by any means, because it just brings antisocial noise and uh, rubbish being loosed all over the place. Uh, plus which, if he's delivering to somebody else's hotel, would they be happy about receiving a delivery with beer in or wine or spirits or whatever. That's it. Okay, if there's no further questions, um, Mr. Sanchez, I, I'm going to this deviate slightly and I hope that the, um, the democratic governance and the licensing officer will uh, approve it, the solicitor. Chair, we, you, run your own, you, you run your own proceedings, you can deviate as much as you wish. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just want to clarify so that we know what we're talking about. Now, regarding the alcohol uh, from nine till 11, you stated that you would be happy to amend that to say 12 till 11. To be honest, I will actually say 100% yes, because... Obviously, it's a hotel, people checking out, people having breakfast, people with families coming down for breakfast. Don't want to be sitting here with people drinking a pint of beer. So I totally agree, 100%. 12 o'clock, well, I think, okay. is so, totally so fine. That, that, that clarifies that point, then. Yeah. Um, you also said that you would do no deliveries after one o'clock in the morning. 
So that's the fine. Food for um, late night refreshments would run from 11 till 1. Are you happy with that? Very happy with that. Right. And also... Uh, We've, we've uh, had representations in the past regarding this, and that is no off sales. Are you happy to agree When we say that? no off sales, if the people from Tamarin Cove, obviously, there, would they be included on the residential licence, as in residents of, would they have the same terms as residents of Barons, number 56, as in 24 hours? Can, can they buy a beer and take it to the Tamarin Cove? Just, just to clarify on that point. If it's a no, then fine. I totally understand. Uh, could I ask the um, Mrs. Davis? Of course. Could we could we you, have a word? In somewhere? You 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 can you could uh, obviously to, to to allow you to obviously reach a decision after the after the meeting is finished. You could you have a number of options. You could word it so that the residents of Tamarind Cove could be allowed to take alcohol from the Barons to the Tamarind Cove. Obviously, the only thing I'd obviously say about that is if you allow them to take alcohol off the premises, the issue is actually making sure that they don't wander off down the, the other end direction, down the street with it. And that is a problem, obviously, and again, that the so, applicant so would I, have I to would mount. suggest that we don't allow that then. And that so potentially the residents of Tamarin Cove, you could allow them to drink inside the barons, but I think potentially there are issues for the applicant if, if they're allowed to take it out of the premises. Yeah, and again... It it's alcohol going into the street, and if they're not going into the hotel, they could be end up getting a ta taxi or anywhere. So no, totally think, think practically that you'd have to watch that they did take it back in. Yeah. So are you happy then that we to agree that there are no off sales, um, which would then preclude people taking it from one hotel to the other? They would have to Correct, drink it in that. your in, in your bar. Okay. Yeah, one hundred percent. That's fine. Right, thank you, Mrs. Davies. Are there any other points that I haven't covered there that you that you've picked up? No, I think I think obviously you've got the question of obviously the residents from the Tamarind Cove whether you want to allow them to be able to drink in there, but obviously that can in the Barons Hotel. But obviously you can make a decision on that. I don't think there's any any amendment. I think their application is quite clear that they want them to be able to drink as 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 if they were residents of the Barons Hotel, which which can either be granted or not as you feel appropriate. So I don't think there are any other amendments that need to be discussed. Okay, thank you. Right, in that case, um, Mr. Sanchez, you've got the opportunity to just sum up um, on anything that you want to say. Um, I think it's almost covered with everything, I think. Um, just that we're here, we want to be successful, we want everybody around us to be happy, um, want the council to be happy. You know, if we do see problems, we do call the police. Obviously that has happened more frequently because we are them type of people that will call the police. We do want to see a reduction in crime. Um, and these back alleys obviously are the situation. It's not the hotel guests as such, it's the back alleys, um, which are causing the problems. We've illuminated the front of the hotel. And before that, we used to have people walking on the car park, sitting between cars. We've illuminated the front. That has gone down to zero. That doesn't happen anymore. OK. Right, thank you very much for that. No right. It, um, the objective. Uh, mm. Is there anything you want to come back on, Mr White? You're on mute, Mr White. Yeah, sorry, Chair. Right. Um no, I, uh, I I fully appreciate it. The 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 only comment was that regarding the WCs, and uh, and I believe that uh, if Mr. Sanchez is as willing as he's shown today, um, it would be uh, really good. We want everybody to be successful. Um, it, it's a shame that he hadn't taken the uh, the time to meet up with the the neighbours and let uh, and and let them know what it was going on before before it all all got to this point and and, and the application could have been passed sweetly. Um, so yeah, right. Okay, yeah. Councillor Smith, is there anything you want to add? Uh, yes, sorry, Chair. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to sort of speak today regarding the applicants uh, thingy. Uh, application, uh, yeah, applaud the ambitions of um, Sanchez and his business. I uh, just hope he can sort of resolve the other issues as we 
Harper have complaints regarding his lighting and his, his signage, you know, regarding that. It, be, it feels like we want to work with you, but you've got to work with us as well. OK. Thank you. OK, Mr. Mr. Ferber, do you want to come back on anything? No, the amendments of the times of uh, opening and whatever seems to cover what we were worried about. Um, all I just say is I hope Mr. Sanchez has good luck in his business. OK, thank you very much for all of that. Um, right, the, the, the panel will now go into private oh. session and come to a decision. Um, whatever the outcome, I hope, Mr. Sanchez, that your work with the community around there, I know it can be difficult, but you need to build those relationships so that the whole of the community uh, along Hornby Road is, is working well. Um, and, you know, good luck with the business, whatever you do. Okay. Well, all be, if we get the restaurant, then they'll all be invited for a dinner, all of them. OK, right. Thank you very much, everybody. OK, um, thank you. Enjoy the rest of the day. Uh, so, Chairman, they'll just stop the broadcast. And